Hello my crafty friends, I hope you're having a fabulous day today. My name is Robin Pitts with Sir Chanti Rocco Creative Designs. Fall is officially here and it's one of my favorite times of year. To celebrate the season, we're going to make a fun fall basket. So today I have a project share and also a tutorial. Before I review the project, let me share with you the paper that I used. This is a stack by Craftsmith. It's called Autumn Dream. I did purchase this last year at Michael's and I really love the beautiful autumnal colors and it has gold foil and it was just perfect for this project. I also used a file by SVG Cuts and it is called Fall Harvest. I will be sure to include a link in the description box. So let me show you the basket. This is the basket that I created and I love the way it turned out. This was so much fun and very easy to put together. I used lots of embossed paper. As you can see here, I have the letters fall that are cut out here. Each of them are placed on pop dots to make them stand out. And I did ink all of the sides of the letters. And if you look closely, you can see some of that embossed paper. On the side here, I've created this fun little floral spray. We've got some fall leaves in the back. We've got this really pretty cotton eyelet ribbon, some jute, natural elements, as well as flowers here. I really love that spray. And then I've continued this trim all the way around the basket. And then on the side here, we have another little floral spray with another leaf, more ribbon, flowers and more jute. You can decorate this in so many different ways. And then of course you have these cute little handles here. Now this is a very sizable basket. It measures seven and a quarter across and four inches wide. So before I show you how to make this, let's fill this box with some fun goodies. First, we want to use some crinkly paper. I purchased this fall mix from the Dollar Tree and I love it because it's got the reds, orange, and browns. So we're gonna stick a little bit of that in here. I purchased this fun hand towel. It says Farm Fresh and it has a little rooster. And I also purchased these fun coordinating pot holders. So we're gonna stick this here in the back, like so. just so that it stands up and creates a nice base. I purchased fun goodies such as pumpkin spiced chocolate almonds, pumpkin spiced dark chocolate, these pyroline chocolate cream wafers. I also purchased some pumpkin spice tea I purchased this beautiful maple leaf chocolate. I'm also including some fun filler. Now these are fall leaves and a little pine cone. I purchased this pick from the Dollar Tree. So I'm just gonna stick this here in the center. I have more fall leaves. And I'm gonna stick over here in the back. I have this fun little orange and yellow flower. I'm going to stick this over here on the side. And then last but not least, I have this adorable little stuffed owl. This is also a purchase from the Dollar Tree. And this little fella is going to go right here on the side. And here's our completed basket. You saw that it took absolutely no time to create a beautiful fall basket. Now, Let's go make the basket. I'm gonna gather my supplies and I'll be right back. Hello, I am back and I have gathered all of the pieces that we will be using to make the basket. I went ahead and pre-cut and inked the edges of all of the individual pieces. These tiny pieces here are the trim of the basket. This goes around the, the center of the basket and these are the base of the basket. These individual pieces here are the spokes that hold the basket together. And then we have these pieces here, which are the handles, and then they are held together with four brads. Now the one thing that I've done in this project that I did not do in the first project is that I have double lined 
all of the cutout pieces. So in other words, I've taken the regular cardstock and then I've backed it with an extra layer of this craft cardstock to make it a bit more sturdy. And you can see that here in the individual pieces, each of these are cut out. They've already been pre-inked and it's definitely a much sturdier piece. Same thing with the handles. Now on the base, I did use 110 pound cardstock because that's where a bulk of the weight will be held. Now the first thing we need to do is attach the sides of the basket to the base. As you can see, this has uh, at angled edges and this is where each of the individual pieces of paper will go. For this, I'm going to be using my art glitter glue. You could use dry adhesive, a glue gun, whatever your preference is. I found that in the first basket that I made that the art glitter glue was perfect for my needs. For the sides of the baskets, you'll notice that each piece has a perforated line and that's where we will be bending the paper to attach to the base. So this piece is going to be adhered like so. And I'm just going to take my glue and attach it to this lower portion here. And I'm going to make sure that it lines up perfectly with this angle right here. You want to make sure it's right on the edge. And you can take your bone folder and hold that down. The one thing you do want to keep in mind is that if you have textured paper or paper with print, like I have here, you want to make sure that everything is going in the right direction. So I'm going to glue this little edge here and line it up right next to the first piece, making sure that it's right on the edge. You want to hold that down. I'm going to go ahead and continue putting in all of these pieces and I'll be right back. We have assembled all of our pieces. This is what the outside of the basket looks like. Now we need to adhere the base. In the cut file, they give you one base inside, which is smaller than the outside base. And they suggest that you cut it out several times to make it very sturdy. I've already glued two pieces of heavyweight cardstock and then I'm gluing this base on top so that it matches the inside of the basket. So I'm just going to glue these two together and this piece will sit right inside here. You want to make sure that each of the angled edges coordinate to each of the spokes. Next we want to create the piece that holds the basket together and you'll notice that there are two pieces that are cut out and they are slightly curved. There is one side that's longer than the other. This is a bit difficult to see here, but if you look at this tapered edge, it comes to a slight point. Now, they did not put any score lines here, but at that point where it angles up at the top is where you overlap this largest edge. So it goes right up to this little area, just so. You can actually feel it with your hands when you cut this piece out and see where it tapers down and then goes up. It starts to increase in size. That's exactly where you want to glue the pieces together. I'm going to make sure you put ample glue here. So you want to hold this together for a second and then you want to do the same thing on the opposite side, but you want to make sure that you glue the tapered edge underneath this larger piece here. Okay, so there you have your circle. Now, when you put this on the basket, you want to make sure that it looks like a little crown and the piece that bows out is what goes on top. So as you look at this circle, you can see that you've got a straighter edge here and then you've got a curved edge here on the top. Okay, so now what you want to do is put this circle on top of the basket pieces. and your basket should come together like this. Now that we have our belly band in place, we have to glue each of these individual panels to the base.
I'm going to glue mine right here at the top, just like so. You want to make sure you hold it nice and tight. And I just say glue a few of these pieces at a time. And I will go back in here and put another layer of glue on each of these panels once I get everything in place. And as you're going around, you want to take your fingers like the way I have them here and just curve the panels. Okay, so now we have our basket assembled. Everything is nice and sturdy. We need to insert this base on the bottom. So I'm going to use some hot glue. And you want to make sure you line these edges up to match each one of these spokes. Now you've got a very sturdy base. Next we have these liner pieces and very similar to this piece here, we have a wider edge and a edge that tapers off. And again, on this side piece, you can feel where there's a little bump right here. That's where you overlap the second piece. You want to make sure that you are adhering the narrow tapered piece to the larger side of the other piece and glue it just like so. And this piece will line up. And just like this bottom piece here, you want to make sure that these pieces curve up. And it's going to go just like this. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this trim on and I'll be right back. Now that we have this trim attached to the top of our basket, we have to attach our handle. So you can find whichever side is going to be your front and the handles will go on either side. And what I'm going to do is curve this handle a little bit. I'm going to have to poke a hole in the basket. So what I'm going to do is take my little pick. This is my Spellbinders pick. I'm going to make a little hole right here. Then I'm going to take one of my brads and stick it in. Okay, so we've got one brad in. I'm just going to push this down. And then we're going to take the other handle, just like so, and poke a hole. So we have our first handle attached. I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. This is our completed basket. I just love the way it turned out. And as you can see, it's got a very rustic look and feel to it. Inside is nice and sturdy, so this will carry quite a bit of weight. This concludes my review of my fall basket. Hopefully I've inspired you with some fun and creative ideas. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and don't forget to hit that little bell so that you will always receive my new videos. Thank you so much for joining me and I wish you all a very happy fall.